Well, that was quite the introduction. Hi, I'm Dr. Boom. I'm Miss Pyro's sister. And when she has something difficult to explain to her students, she calls me in. She's a pretty good scientist, but I'm even better. So she tells me that you guys are supposed to be learning about how gravity and inertia govern the way that our planets orbit the sun. So some things you've got to remember is that gravity is the force where a planet or other body draws and tends to go towards the center. Okay? Inertia, remember that's the rule of laziness, things tend to keep going unless they're acted upon by a force or they tend to stay still like I do on Sunday afternoons on my couch and I don't move. That's inertia. We're either going to stay going or we're going to stop. So when these two forces act together, both gravity and inertia, that's what keeps our planets in orbit around the sun. Gravity is also what pulled everything together after the Big Bang. It's what created our stars, our galaxies, and our planets. It also keeps our atmosphere around our planet. It makes when we drop things, they fall to the ground, all because of gravity. And Sir Isaac Newton stated that an object at rest tends to stay at rest. An object in motion tends to stay in motion unless it's acted upon by a force. So according to Newton, our planets are constantly moving in a straight line, but gravity from the sun is pulling it towards it. So these two forces working together is what keeps our planet from either being pulled into the sun and burning up or shooting off into space. Today, Dr. Boom is bringing you a demonstration. We are going to have da -da 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 -da, this marble. That's going to represent our Earth. Look at this fancy drawing I made. Yep, you guessed it. That's the sun. This is a cup, but it's going to represent an orbital path. Now, do you know how long it takes for our Earth to orbit the Sun one time? 365 days. We're going to speed it up a little bit. Okay? So I'm going to use this cup, my marble, and you'll see in just a minute what we do. Alright, so what we have here is our Earth, our Sun, um, I traced the cup into the orbital path. Remember, we don't travel in a perfect circle. We travel in what's called an ellipse. But for the purposes of this model, we're doing a circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Earth spinning in an orbital path. Um, and then I'm going to lift up the cup. I'm going to start lifting it towards the one. Then we'll do the two, the three, the four. And we're going to see what happens to the planet when we lose either the gravity or the inertia. So here goes the first one. Okay. There we go. I'm going to lift it up. Oh, and it came right out here. So I'm going to trace that. And I lost my planet. No fear, I have another one. Okay, here's Earth number two. This time I'm going to lift it up over towards the two. Oh, and it came right out over here. Okay, I'm going to try it again. This time I'm going to tilt the cup back towards the three. Oh, and it went right out over here. So I'm going to trace that. Now you can probably see a pattern. In science, this is what we look for. We look for patterns. So this time I'm going to lift it over towards the four. And if my hypothesis is correct, it should shoot out over here. Let's see. Ooh, it was over this way. Still kind of follows the pattern though. So without gravity or without centripetal force, our planets would just 
go out and float through space. Because remember, inertia is what keeps them going, but gravity is what keeps them from going out. Because the, the mass of the planets and the mass of the sun have a gravitational force, and lucky for us, that's what keeps us here. Okay, Dr. Boom's got something fun for you guys to try at home. So, I went in my kitchen and I found this glass. Notice it's smaller on top than it is on the bottom. I'm going to take my earth, we're going to put it in there, and I'm going to start making that motion. Notice it's going around and I'm going to turn it upside down. Look at that! Gravity and inertia and work! And it fell out. Try that at home, kids. So let's wrap this up and recap. So in order for a planet or anything to get in an orbit, the gravity and centripetal force must be equally balanced with inertia. So if we have an object that comes close to the sun and it's headed this way, the gravity from the sun is going to pull it in. If the mass is great enough, it's going to start curving in. And if it's not great enough, it might just keep on going. But for it to be balanced and to create an orbit, it's got to have um, the gravity from the sun is pulling on the planet, and the planet is also pulling on the sun. So it keeps going and it keeps creating this um, it continually tries to move forward, but it's pulled back by gravity. So when they become equally balanced, both gravity and centripetal force, when those are equally balanced with inertia, the moving outward or forward, um, that's when we have things that will create an orbit around another object. Same thing goes with our Earth. When we send up satellites, we've got to find that sweet spot above our earth so that it will have the balance of inertia and gravity. If we have it too far out, it's going to fly off. If we have it too close to earth, it's, our gravity is going to pull it in and it's going to crash. So there's a very fine line where um, it's balanced and that's how we end up with an orbit. Alright guys, I hope you understand how the motions of um, our planets are governed by gravity and centripetal force. I enjoyed working with you today. I hope Miss Pyro will let me come back. <laughs>